Woo! Are you guys excited? Okay, you got to help me out, okay? Because uh, there is there are a bunch of you from different churches today, and I want I want help, okay? So if you're from River of Life, give a woohoo! All right, are you from? Who's here from Hillside Fellowship? Woo! All right, here's uh, who's here from? Let's see, uh, Church of Christ. Nope. Uh, Hope Church. Any other churches? Cedar? Not, oh, okay. Beaverton? What, where else? Evangelical. Awesome. We got another free Methodist church here. Woo, woo. Anybody else? New Hope? Brownsville? Woo. All right. We're so glad you're here. Uh, we've been anticipating this time. Ben Fuller and his and his band is here. Um, they're going to be at the Jamboree at, at 1230 also. You can go there and, and have two times with them. Um, if, for whatever reason, if you need earplugs, Josh Dart has, uh, has them right there. So I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm already losing my hearing. So just kidding. <laughs> hey, my friend, Pastor Mark is here. He's going to introduce and pray. All right. Well, first of all, I just want to do a little quick intro of uh, Ben Fuller. He comes to us from Vermont by way of Nashville and many other places along the way. Uh, music has been a huge part of his life, has taken him places he never dreamed of. Uh, he's gone through his share of pain and grief and addiction. But since he encountered Jesus in a powerful way, it changed his life. And his story took a turn for the better, to, to uh, have an understatement there for you. But he's going to share some of his story with you today through song and, and whatever God puts on his heart. And just show you what grace and redemption looks like. And so uh, already just having met him, I know um, he's got something to share with us today that's going to be good and it's going to be lasting. So let's pray and then we will welcome him to uh, to get going. Lord, thank you so much for your amazing love for each one of us, Lord. There's not a single one of us who is overlooked, uncared for, or unnoticed by you. You know our struggles, and you promise to be with us, Lord. And, and uh, I just pray that today we would all see our way clear to taking the next step with you, moving forward in our faith, and uh, just remembering to do what matters most in our lives. So thank you for it, Lord. Bless our time together. In Jesus' name, Amen. So let's welcome Ben Fuller. Heaven came 
came down, set a man on fire. learned uh, about five minutes ago it's Oregon and not Oregon praise God I uh, what an honor it is uh, to be here and I, I asked the pastors I said does every church look like this here it's gorgeous I wasn't always uh, lit on fire though and uh, I'm here to tell you that story this morning so I'm so grateful that God has allowed me to, to come here. This is my first ever time, uh, first time ever, I guess, in this state. And so I'm so grateful to be here. And, and uh, it's just an honor to worship the Lord with you today. But I grew up on a, a small dairy farm in the state of Vermont and uh, about 175 Holstein cows. And I was the only son. So my dad and I, we, we loved each other very much, but we also butt heads a lot. And uh, it was really difficult because his dad had raised him the way his dad had. And that was men can't show emotion because emotion shows weakness. My whole life, I just tried to achieve my dad's approval. He never said, I love you. He never said it to me. And all I wanted to do was hear him say, I love you. And so a lot, a lot of things, a lot of times, I just didn't want to be around and because uh, he'd make me feel so small and there was a time that I took a, a gun off our wall in our living room and I, I walked out into the woods and, uh, and I put the barrel into my mouth and I nearly pulled the trigger because all I just wanted to hear was I love you but God had other plans for my life and I'm here today to tell you the story about how he did and so 18 years old rolls around. I'm still not fixed, right? I'm still messed up. I'm still trying and striving and all these things. And I, I find cocaine and I find alcohol and I find sex and I find all these things that, that take me into all these different places. And, and I know there's a lot of kids in the crowd today, but they need to hear about it because times are changing. This place, this world is crazy. And I was 16 years old when all that stuff happened. And so I've been meeting so many young boys and girls that are showing me cut marks and are telling me suicide stories and attempts. It's crazy. I can't even believe it. But it all starts by telling your story. 
It all starts by just being truthful and honest and just laying it out there and say, hey, I'm struggling. And so all those years, 14 and a half years of dealing with addiction and running away and not knowing, God was with me the whole time. I had no idea. I lost my best friend to a heroin overdose in 2017. It was December 16th. After that, it sparked this writing thing in me, and I started writing my feelings, and I started sharing, and I had picked up guitar, and I started playing places, and bars, and restaurants, and gigs, and all this stuff, and I was doing country music. But again, this question came up, is this it? Is this, is this it? I kept feeling such emptiness, despite it all. Everyone, great job, I love your voice, you're amazing. Wow, can you come to my place, play at my wedding? Oh, I love you, you're amazing. I still felt so empty. And so 2018 rolls around. I started hearing from people, you got to go to Nashville, bro. You got to go to Tennessee. You could do it. You could make it. So I moved. I sold my house. I was a a stonemason for 15 years. I love buildings. That's why this is so special because I used to create stuff just like this. And we'd plant the flowers and it was beautiful, the ferns. And uh, I end up down in Nashville with my truckload of stuff right? Like everybody else's story. And I took a chance. Well, I got there and I realized every single star from every single hometown is there. Thousands of people that are so talented, way better than me, way better. And I was, I honestly was ready to go home, but I got a job working at Tootsie's and I was like, well, I think I made it. And I remember sending a picture to my dad of the Tootsie's world famous, the, the bar downtown, you know, and my dad wrote back, he goes, wow, You've made it. And it was like the first time in my life, I was 32 years old, I had ever received that confirmation from my father. Like, hey, you've made, I'm proud of you, he said. And again, it was like this temporary high that lasted a couple of days and then it disappeared again. And so God, though, he knew the whole time I was getting tired of this. And all of a sudden, he had sent a family from Vermont a year and a half before I even got there. I had no idea. But they called me up. It was a fall day in 2019. I played Broadway for a whole year. And they said, hey, Ben, do you want to come over for a meal? Do you remember us? We used to come see you play country bars and stuff. I said, yeah, you guys are here. And they said, yeah. So I went over and I had this meal. I had no idea how biblical it was. Maybe some of you have to invite somebody over for a meal. Oh, my word, I don't turn food down either. Praise God. So all of a sudden I show up and they say, hey, will you come to church with us in the morning? I finished my meal, right? I am full. And I said, sure, sure, I'll go. And I had no idea what was waiting for me on the other side of those doors. Church of the city, 2,000 people in Franklin, Tennessee. 9.30 in the morning I walked in and it was the music. Sunday morning, just like this, the music. God used the music to draw me in, and the auditorium doors are wide open. And I stood there, and I swear to this day, if somebody caught a picture of me, my feet would have been right off the ground because I had never felt that kind of high in my life ever. And right then and there, I gave it all to the Lord because I believe I heard his voice. And he said, Ben, I gave you yours, and now you're going to sing for me. And I felt it inside more than ever. And I said, okay, God. All right, Mr. Powerful. I said, okay, Almighty. Then you do it. Obviously, they say you're super powerful. The name of Jesus was a swear word in my mouth my whole life. I had no idea. Take it all away then, I said. Take away the addiction and the sex and the drinking and the driving and all the stuff I was doing. And how about my language too? I'm tired of the F word and not my last name. And he did. And so I'm standing here this morning. Boy, I guess three years, three years and just shy of 11 months clean and sober because of Jesus Christ. And what he's given me. So we're here today. This is our living room. What a beautiful living room it is. We've been allowed to come here and just praise God. And so I'm just going to tell you the stories, the songs, all I do. My, my writing changed. Everything changed. And so now all of a sudden, before we sit down, I pray. I say, God, what do you want to say? Tell us what you want to tell us. Let me be the voice. Send me, use me, pick me everywhere. And he's just been opening up all these beautiful doors. So I'm thankful. 
But like Paul said, it's this mystery. I can't figure out quite what's apprehended me, this love that has apprehended me, but it's the mystery of God that keeps me coming back to the cross every single morning because I knew what all those things did to me. They were death, they were lifeless, they were dead ends. And I was so tired of living that way. So I just invite you to just open your hearts, open your minds, open your hands maybe, and just praise him with us however you want to praise him with us this morning. This song is called But the Cross. heard Satan told you a story that you can't escape your past that the innocence you lost there's no way to get it back I heard fear sold you some fiction you bought everything he had but you too afraid to live get your heart Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And I was in trouble, I was all alone. And the fight I'm fighting, it was for my soul. I was waiting on a change, but wasn't sure. I was trying not to bend, but I was breaking. I was out of answers, I was out of plans. And the only thing I had to bring was dirty hands. I was looking for a friend who could find I was barely hanging on. And like jumper cables to my chest, from death to life in just one breath, you left an open grave. 
That's the moment my whole world changed It's falling fast, I was saving it Didn't know how razor close it I was through it All along you knew that I would need a savior So you resurrected me And like John Fruitcakes to my chest From death to life in just one I, uh, especially being new to church, this whole thing's happened so fast, and uh, I, all these old hymns have now become brand new to me, and so people are like, do you know this one, you know this one, you know that one, and so I'm learning all these old hymns and just enjoying uh, learning them and, and how much they point to, to the Word, um, because that's the only thing that I've found thus far in three and a half years of being a believer in Jesus is uh, it's the Word of God. That's it. I can point you there. Pastors can point you there. But until you actually open up the Word of God yourself and get in there and get that revelation for yourself, like that's what I found. It's the word, written Word of God. And that's what makes the devil flee because, you know, I, t I tell you about that um, when I was 16, about when he tried that suicide thing on me, um, we actually we were, we were able to be blessed and go on tour with a band called Casting Crowns. And uh, we were with them this spring. And uh, the devil came for my life three weeks before we went on tour with them, too. Tried telling me my voice is no good, my songs are no good, that I'm no good. And, uh, and I almost believed it, you know. In a moment when you're vulnerable and you're by yourself and alone, um, sometimes you, could, you can believe that. But what I remembered was what Jesus had to do, right? And uh, when he was up there on top of the world and the devil's like, this can all be yours. And I know it is written that I shall worship my God, my God alone. That is it, period. And I opened the word, and I just started reading. So if you find yourself in that, if he comes for your life like he comes for mine, just open up the word and just start reading. And there he flees. Once you know that you're a child of God, once you know exactly who you are in Christ, the devil's like, oh, shoot. Dang it. They remembered again. Ah, I'll come back later, you know. And he does. I know. Dang it. It's behind me. 
but you've got to know. So anyway, this is an old hymn that I, that I like to sing sometimes. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea. With the glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us live to make men free. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah, his truth is marching on. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Woo. Well, praise God. This, uh, this next song is a, is a song that I wrote um, from a place of what is happening to me and where have I been and what have I done and what have you allowed me to endure, Lord? I can't believe it, as this light switch turned on and I'm like, he was with me the whole time. He was, because that's part of my story is I never got caught. All the drinking and driving, all the drug dealing, all the stuff, I never got busted. And so... I couldn't fathom he was riding with me the entire time. He had his hand on my shoulder the whole time. He knew. I just didn't feel it. I just didn't recognize him. And now that I do, everything has changed. And uh, I wrote this song out of, a, out of that place of kind of looking back and going, you, you, were, you followed me the whole time. He was there the whole time. God sends me into a prisons now. And uh, I never thought I'd say this out loud, but I really look forward to going to prison. And uh, I'll tell you what, I have seen mighty miracles behind the walls that nobody can see through and uh, over the razor wire that no one can jump through. God can, and he is, and it's been powerful. And so this is one of my favorite uh, songs to sing inside those walls because I just see the brokenness and I see so much of myself and the fact that I don't know how many times it could have been, hundreds, maybe thousands, that I could have been in there too. And now the Lord is sending me in there to bring hope and tell them all about who he is. So this song is called Chasing Rebels. But I ain't one to hide my stupid and my stubborn. But I won't lie about the alleys where I've been. But I won't ever try to cover all the lies that pulled me under. Billy buried in a box with my own sin And this freedom that I found Is not a platform For me to boast in anything That I have done But it's just a messy canvas of God's mercy in my madness And a fiery love I could not outrun I find no glory in my story All the times I ran away And I'm not proud of where I've been And all the 
choices that I made but if my past is now your present I pray you see how as an unrelenting calm and for you Savior who loves Jason rebels down When it comes to failure, you're no different. But when it comes to shame, you're not alone. From prodigals on bar stools to pretenders in the church pews, nobody's ever really to. an unrelenting calm for you Savior who loves chasing rebels now he's coming for you. 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 times I ran away yeah, I'm not proud of where I've been and all the choices that I made but if my past is now your present I'm praying you see how there's an unrelenting calm and for you Savior there's an unrelenting calm and for you Savior Who loves chasing rebels down? Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I've had a dollar to my name And I've had friends that walked away And I've even lost myself a time or two and I've had bridges crossed and burned but Through all the wreckage I have learned There's one thing I could never lose If I got Jesus I've got all that I could ever need Take the world away from me I'll be okay If I got a cheese There's a hope that's living deep inside The joy that I can never hide A safe place to fall If I got a cheese I And I've had failed to spend with grace And it's not from what I've done It's Christ in me A miracle I can't explain Oh, he's given me his name I'm the richest man I could ever be If I got Jesus I've got all Where for me, I'll 
got Jesus I got all that I could ever need Take the world away from me be my voice even when I don't feel like singing. I ask him to walk with me when I don't feel like walking. And uh, it's tiring. You know, I often think of the, the, the disciples and how they went from place to place and they walked. Can you guys imagine that? They didn't even take planes and buses and all that. Could you imagine? We've got it easy, boys. Look, they're looking at me like, no, we don't. Uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine, though, how they did it. And... Uh, but again, going back to that love that has apprehended me, it was funny. I was on the plane. Uh, I was on the plane ride here, and uh, last night everything got delayed. And blah blah. We were stuck in Denver for five and a half hours, and Southwest rebooked us. And uh, anyway, it was just a big. So I was like, "Oh, here it comes. We better start praying." You know, here comes the attack and all that. And so we started thinking about all this, and and uh, I was like, "Well, obviously somebody doesn't want us to make it here today." And, I think we landed at like 1.30 this morning. And uh, anyway, long story, but I had this text all written up, you know, to my manager. And I was like, I'm tired. I'm going to be grumpy. It is early. I have lots of singing to do today. I don't. Oh, huh. It's not them that asked me to do this. It wasn't them that, that's making me do this. And the Lord, oh, he's ministered to me right in that seat. I've called you to do this because of what I've done. What I've done for you, not what they've done for you. And it changed everything about this whole trip. And so uh, I just was reminded of that, is that he has called you, not somebody else. And it doesn't matter. And so just fix your eyes upon the Lord. It has been so hard. Following Jesus is so hard. One of the hardest things ever. And when I accepted him, all these things started changing. And all my friends who I was with, my beer drinking, tobacco chewing, swearing, women chasing, all the stuff, all, all my buddies, they, everything changed. They're like, who are you now, bro? We don't even know who you are anymore. We don't know if we like this. And so when I went back to Vermont for a, a little party, I had a little get together and I was like, man, you know, I, I can stay sober. I can go up there. And I did. And I walked into this party and, and each one of my, it was about 20 of my buddies all took turns. And I felt like Jesus at the whipping post. And they all took turns telling me, dude, keep writing country music, bro. Keep doing this. Keep singing about back roads. Don't forget where you came from. You're throwing hay bales, man. Sing about that. Hey, dude, I don't know this Jesus thing. I don't like that. They, they all took turns running right around. You know what I did? I pulled a Peter in that, in that case, and I said, you're right. You're right. I was so weak in that moment. I was like, you're right. I give up. I'm not going to sing about Jesus and that stuff. And I walked outside, and I got in my truck, and I was so sick to my stomach because I realized that I had just denied him and everything that he had done. And so I got in my truck, and I made a promise. And I said, Lord, just let me serve you. And he said, I am. You came back to me, didn't you? You came back to me. And so I needed a song to tell all my buddies about what happened. And uh, so I was in the writing room one day and we started talking about what we're gonna write about. And we prayed, Lord, give us the words. I was a little angsty like I am this morning. I was on the edge of my seat, you know? I'm like, all right, all right. I wanna write about those guys that whipped me. That's what I want. I wanna tell them about you. 
And uh, my buddy Jonathan was sitting there. He said, man, I don't know. What do you, what do you think? And I said, you know what? I didn't even find God. I stood up. I was like, you know what? I didn't even find God. He found me. And Jonathan goes, that's it. I said, that's what? He said, that's the song. I said, well, how does it go? <laughs> it goes like this. This song's called, He Found Me. I found empty in a bottle Trying to fill the hole I dug myself five feet deep Had one more foot to go I looked for peace inside a powder Till it put me on the floor I got so close to overdosing I knocked on heaven's door I knew I was searching for something But I didn't know what I spent so much time just trying to figure out Exactly what it was But I didn't find my way back home All along I didn't change my mind Overnight on my own It was a problem But my hands that would finally set me free I didn't find God No, I didn't find God He found me in the dark with the force of a thousand horses and straight towards my heart never thought that I'd believe till he was right in front of me he was right there all along now I see I didn't find my way back all along I didn't change my mind over my on my own it wasn't my Sleep. 
said rise up I didn't know I was sleeping I didn't know I was lost You put the skeleton key It opened the door to my heart I'm wide y'all put your hands together for this awesome band right here praise god for him would you Grace of 
You know, I'm always torn. I'm like, should church services be a little more dialed down or should we dial it up or should we, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, so I hope you guys feel our hearts. And yeah, I see the dial it up is right in the back. Praise God. I, uh, I don't know. We're just giving it all glory to him, all honor to him. I'm so grateful to even step foot on a, the country music stage over there. I, it's unbelievable. But he wouldn't let me do that until I could praise him. Isn't that amazing? It's funny because, because before I was praising people. And so now I just go out and sing for him. And it's awesome. And that's why he's allowing us to do that. So all glory and honor and power to the Lord who has changed my life. And uh, I just wanted to introduce real quick these guys. Jonathan Blackburn comes from uh, Washington, D.C., and uh, he's just an amazing man. He, he's just a soldier. He continues to show up time and time and time and time again for the Lord. And So would y'all make some noise for Jonathan? Thank you. Love you, bro. Back here on the drum kit, I'm so thankful for him. He comes from Tallahassee. I'm surprised he doesn't have a, a winter coat on right now because of this beautiful breeze that we're feeling. Praise God. Jacob McFarlane, y'all, make some noise for Jacob. And over here, this really could be, a, this is just Taylor as a testimony in my life, but God sends you people that you don't even know you need. You don't even know you need them yet, right? He sends you those people. That was Taylor for me. We both moved to Nashville the same time five years ago. And uh, we met at a coffee shop. And he played guitar, and I tried to sing. And so we met, and all of a sudden it was like, hey, maybe we could play music together. I finally answered him back. And he tried a bunch, and I was just reckless and not paying any attention. And then he took a trip to Vermont with me, and he carried around a little book like this. And I didn't know what it was. And he, and he would read it every night. And I was like, what, what is that? And it said, Holy Bible on the front. And Taylor started ministering to me before I even knew anything about who Jesus was. And so uh, just be open to those. Surround yourself with people that hold you accountable and that love the Lord. Surround yourself with those people because they're going to remind you when you need it the most. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Taylor Bridges. like we should pray. This is amazing. Uh, Lord, Father, thank you. We come here humble. We come here thankful. We come here filled up more than we ever thought. God, you meet us in the places that are tough, the places that are hard, the places that we don't want to be in, the places that we do want to be in. You show up everywhere. You've shown me that time and time again, Father. So I just pray for all the hearts and the ears and the lungs and the eyes and the hands and feet in this beautiful room with us this morning, that you would walk with them, that you would talk with them, that you would nudge them like you nudge me, that you would ride with them the way that you rode with me, that you would show them who you are, Father. Continue to reveal yourself to all of us. What a joy, what an honor it is. I'm not doing this for people, I'm doing this for you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If y'all know this last song, we gotta run over to that other stage and praise the Lord over there. Thank you, God. But if you know this song, sing along. It goes like this. I'm a child of the most high God and the most high God's for me. I'm a child of the most high God and the most high God yeah. for me. It's who I am. I'm a child of the most high God and the most high God's for me. Yeah. I'm a child of the most high God and the most high God's for me. I stand in front of the mirror. And I don't like
Holding on your Jesus' name. 